broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta. It's time for Customer Experience Radio, brought to you by Heineken Company, real estate advisors specialized in corporate relocation. Now, here's your host, Jill Heineck. Welcome to this very special edition of Customer Experience Radio. I'm your host, Jill Heineck, and I'm a business owner, real estate advisor, and customer experience enthusiast. As a business um, run mainly on deep relationships, the handwritten note has been a staple in my business. I never leave um, an appointment without dropping a note in the mail thereafter, and probably goes back to my parents kind of forcing us to write thank yous for gifts that were given to us when we were kids. But it's something that's really stuck with me over the years, and I find that it you see it less and less now. Um, but now there's kind of a resurgence where more and more companies are going back to the handwritten note. And so that's why I'm super excited to have our guest today, David Wax, whose most recent venture is centered around the handwritten note. His latest venture, Handwritten, and that's hand written W-R-Y-T-T-E-N, is bringing back the lost art of letter writing through scalable robot-based solutions that write your notes in pen. Developed as a platform, Handwritten lets you send notes from your CRM, such as Salesforce, your website, apps, or through custom integration. Used by major mailboxes, e-commerce giants, nonprofits, and professionals, Handwritten is changing the way brands and people connect. And so excited. Welcome, David Wax. Thanks, Jill. Thank you so much for having me. So good to have you here. Of course. I'm so glad. I would love to get, I mean, obviously this is so intriguing to me, but I would love to get a little insight into your background. I know you're a serial entrepreneur and kind of tell us how, what led you to this point. Absolutely. So my last company uh, actually started in the real estate space. We were providing text message solutions for realtors. So we would hang a writer from a real estate sign that said text for info on properties you would text in, this is before the iPhone and before apps right. and all that. You would text in house 1234 to 1234. Actually, the number was 30364, which I know is a uh, Atlanta zip code, zip. it turns mm-hmm. out. But, uh, but yeah, you would text house to one, uh, 30364, you get back info on the house, and then the realtor would get your lead. This mm-hmm. was the first solution for a company that I had called Sellit, C-E-L-L-I-T. <laughs> and um, Sellit began doing that. And then we started sending out text messages for re- um, retailers like Abercrombie & Fitch, Toys mm-hmm. R Us, Sam's Club, Office Max, um, as w- along with For Rent Magazine and all these other things. And we became one of the largest providers of text messaging solutions out there, sending millions of text messages a day. And then when I uh, sold this company, Sell It, I wanted to thank all my clients and and, uh, employees for all the hard work and their uh, business over the years. And I sat down to write them a handwritten note because, um, you know, we were sending all these text messages and I knew all that worked. But at the same time, I felt like I kind of was partially responsible for creating a monster where, you know, every day you receive a hundred texts and 300 some odd emails and slacks and Twitter and Facebook. So I wanted to send my employees something that really mattered and my um, customers too. So I sat down with a pen and paper and I got through like 10 of them with best intention. And then my hand cramped and I lost focus <laughs> and I didn't have enough stamps and you know the deal. So I thought there has to be a better way. And that's where handwritten came from. And really what it's about is, um, creating that personal connection when everything else is going digital, we go analog. It's about um, pivoting the opposite direction so you really stand out. And uh, now we do that uh, with 95 custom robots that we build in our facility in Phoenix. It's totally vertically integrated like Henry Ford. Um, So in one part of the room, we build the robots, then they come into our main facility and they're put to work. We don't sell the robots. We don't do anything like that. And we do on a a good day, 10,000 notes, something like that. Um, And we're just kind of growing that way. And uh, I'm very confident we're the biggest provider in our very small niche space, but we work with clients from, you know, what you said, realtors, mortgage brokers, all the way up to like 
luxury handbag makers and stuff like that. So it's a very wide gamut. So I'm curious. So I'm envisioning all these robots in a warehouse and they are like robotic people writing notes. Yep. Yep. So, <laughs> so each robot holds a pilot G2 ballpoint pen. So each one is just a regular ballpoint pen you could get at Staples. Um, it's sitting in a special pen holder that's a little heavier because the robot itself doesn't push down on the paper. So we had to make, make a heavy pen to do that. Um, but then these robots kind of look like um, old plotters, if you know what a plotter looks like. But basically, it's a conveyor belt and a robotic arm. And the paper comes down onto the conveyor belt. The robotic arm writes the note and then spits it out the end. And then we have another robot doing the same thing with the envelope, writing that envelope in the handwriting style of your choice. And then we have real people that make sure the card looks good, the envelope looks good. If there's inserts that go into that, such as um, Starbucks card or business card, or if we're inserting a book or whatever that is, we do a lot of books now. Um, we, we handle all that and then we um, put a real stamp on it and mail it out. So it's um, totally authentic. I run the company and design the robots and I walk around and I see some of the handwriting styles coming off the machines that I'm not familiar with because maybe they're, maybe you, Jill, uh, sent in your own handwriting style for replication, something like that. I'll see it come off the robot and I will be dumbfounded. Like it looks, it looks that real where I'm like, gee, I just saw this thing come off my robot and it still passes the, the task. So yeah. So what is the um, kind of feedback that you're getting from your clients? I mean, I know what an impact a handwritten note means to me these days. I mean, outside of, you know, junk mail, um, it's yeah. nice to get like, you know, you see that envelope with somebody's write it, handwriting on it with, you know, a pretty stamp on it. And, and you're like excited, even if it's just, you know, hey, how you doing? So um, what kind of response are you getting from your clients? Yeah, I was so happy that you had uh, invited me on here because you you know, customer experience is all is, is exactly what we do. Um, and to your point, the envelope. So we don't even really, if somebody, you know, says do 10,000 postcards, we'll do postcards. But by and large, we don't do postcards because it's not the right customer experience. We want somebody to have that experience of saying, oh, what did Jill send me? And then open right. that envelope and that one second of wonder or two seconds and then opening the envelope, it's all part of the experience. Um, but to your point, and I'm happy to go over all these stats, um, we have customers like, a, I thought they were a law firm based off the company's name, but it turns out it's a piano tuning company. So they're okay. in your house once a year tuning your piano. And after they do, they send you a handwritten note thanking you for the opportunity to tune the piano. Um, that gentleman that tunes the piano is, is then back in that house a year later, and he finds on the refrigerators the handwritten note he sent them a year ago. So the fact that it creates that much, I guess, amazement that you sent them a handwritten mm -hmm. note, but also that, you know, every time they go to the fridge to get orange juice or milk, they see your handwritten note there. Mm -hmm. I think that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. We have other clients that's, that see uh, meeting bookings triple. So if you're doing cold outreach, which quite frankly can get expensive, if nothing else, just for the stamps involved, uh, but they've seen meeting bookings triple. We have clients, a high-end uh, bespoke suit company that where you send in your measurements, they'll make a suit for you. Mm -hmm. um, they have coupon redemption rates of 18% when they're included with the handwritten note versus the average coupon redemption rates, like three to 5%. Um, we have uh, one client, which is a office snack box which we actually subscribe to here. Now, one thing I have to say is with very few exceptions, we never mention client names because nobody <laughs> wants to, to tell the truth that they're using us and not writing the notes themselves. But this is an office snack box. Um, you subscribe to it every month they send, or every two weeks they send you boxes of snacks for your, your team. And what they'll do is they notice that if they screw up sending you your office snack box, um, they'll follow up with a apology note and a second box of snacks, you know, to apology, apologize for that. They found that those customers that had the screw up had a lifetime, higher lifetime value than those that never had the screw up. 
So, of course, not all of that's attributed to the handwritten note. A lot of it's to the snacks that you get, the additional box of snacks, but the handwritten note plays kind of into that. So what they started doing was screwing up intentionally and then <laughs> sending everybody the second box of snacks and the apology note to raise their, you know, to raise their average lifetime value. Um, other customers, just for some other examples, you know, it's kind of sad, but in this day and age, I think the average person receives one to three handwritten notes per month. So it's very rare now. Even, even that, I mean, that even sounds like a lot these days. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So when people get them, there's a viral aspect. They'll literally take a picture of it, post it to Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter. Yep. Um, we have one client there, one of the largest daily YouTube shows, and they wanted to monetize this show through a fan club. And as part of that fan club, the first thing you get is a handwritten note. And they, quite frankly, didn't change it up at all. Like every single fan club member got the same handwritten note. It said, Dear Jill or Dear Dave. Other than that, same message verbatim. It didn't matter. People were still so excited to receive their handwritten note and post it to Twitter. And they saw all these other handwritten note photos posted to Twitter. If they didn't get theirs for some reason, like they gave us the wrong address or whatever, mail delay, uh, they would complain to the YouTube show, where's my handwritten note? Um, we have another client, which I can mention, it's called Vinyl, V-N-Y-L. They're a record subscription. So if you still listen to Vinyl Records, they will send you, um, it's really cool. What they'll do is they'll look at your Spotify or your other music feeds and figure out recommendations and send you based on that. And with those records, they'll send you a handwritten note explaining why they chose what they did. And that goes out every month. And those photos of handwritten notes are all over Instagram and mostly Instagram because it attracts the Instagram demographic. But, you know, again, it's that viral, that viral aspect. Um, the oh, yeah. vi that vinyl, uh, that is a super cool service. I'm going to look into that. <laughs> yeah, vinyl is very cool. VNYL.org, I believe. Uh, we'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. I mean, it makes, so. that does make a lot of sense. I mean, you know, no matter what it is for, the fact that you're getting something other than an e another email and another text message another Facebook DM or an Insta DM or, you know, junk mail. It's yep. just a nice change and it does feel personal. Yeah. So, you know, in this day and age, we send out automated emails at handwritten. When you um, get into our sales funnel, we'll send you automated notes that look totally personal. And I, I receive those 50 times a day. And I also get the did you get my last email follow up on that spam email that I got 50 times a day? And so in this day and age, when even the most personalized email is automated, it's all discounted. You know, mm -hmm. everybody discounts that stuff if they even open it. Right. Um, so the handwritten note is really, you know, one, there's a perception that it can't be automated. Um, and two, even if you do automate it and, or even if it is automated, I think people still like it. You know, it's, there's still, at least they took the extra expense or time to find a solution or time to visit the website and enter my note, whatever it is, people still appreciate that you received a handwritten note. Just like when you receive the Christmas card from the White House or whatever, you know that the president didn't sit there and sign a note for you, Jill Hynek, or maybe, maybe he did, I don't know. But, um, you know, those are somebody else is doing that or they're using an auto pen or whatever, but it's still cool. And you still appreciate that at a different level level than if he sent, he tweeted a photo of a Christmas card. You know what I mean? So, well, and you know, if you get a letter from the president, I don't care who wrote it, it's going on the wall, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? And it's going to be Insta, you know, it's going to be Instagrammable immediately. <laughs> Sometimes the wall, sometimes the dartboard, depending on what, what side. Right. Of that depending is. on what, yeah. situation. <laughs> what situation. But, but yeah. But, you know, we digress. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so that, uh, so that's, that, that's going on there. Um, and then uh, what else can I tell you about these? Well, I guess I wanted to get a little bit of insight as to um, like what kinds of messages, maybe, I don't know if you have any specific examples of 
what messaging is really working for clients. Um, I mean, you know, just, it's just interesting to hear, you know, I getting the same old, you know, thanks for buying this, you know, that's one thing, but I'm wondering, you know, what creative things are some of your clients doing to get response or at least get, um, you know, Hey, thanks for reaching out. I'm going to order something else. Yeah. So we have one client who, um, is a large Southeastern United States and and actually could be up in Atlanta, um, solar panel installer. Mm -hmm. And every time they have a installation sales meeting with somebody, you know, they go into your house and they explain what they can do. They automatically send a handwritten note follow-up that note says, thank you so much for having me in your home. It's, it's signed in quotes by the person who came into your house. So the name of the consultant, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, But really, I think um, most of our clients just do it as a thank you. You know, it's thank you so much for your business. That could be first purchase. If it's automated, you could set it up so it's after fifth purchase or a certain purchase threshold. So um, if you have a Shopify store, maybe you send the handwritten note after that person made their hundredth dollar purchase or whatever, or maybe on the anniversary of purchase, just sending a thank you. I do think there's ROI here, but I also think there's just some qualitative as opposed to quantitative benefit of handwritten yes. notes in general. Not my company. I'm just talking, you know, what I'm general. here to, to preach is actual handwritten notes, whether you use us or not. Um, so just saying thank you, it's, you know, so many people don't feel appreciated, especially now when people are lonely and sitting at home. I mean, I think... Mm-hmm. I think there is, it goes a long way just to let people know that you think about them. Um, so, 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 so that, um, and, and, is- and to your point there, that there is business still going on, whether you see your clients or not. So, you know, and you have to think about them being home, not really going anywhere or doing anything and having any other interaction out, you know, off of zoom anyway. So I think to your point that, that could, the impact could be 10 times, 20 times, a hundred times more. Um, especially now with some people are still sheltering in place. They're just haven't, mm-hmm. I mean, I have a friend whose parents haven't left their apartment since March 6th, literally. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so that could really, you know, ch- make their day. <laughs> yeah. Um, other examples that we've done um, with uh, well, we do a lot of referral requests. So realtors and mortgage brokers, um, you know, uh, we're, we're starting to get into whole cadences of, you know, after the purchase, thank you so much for your purchase. Here's a $500 Home Depot card, you know, use it to outfit your home. And then maybe six months later, um, oh, by the way, you know, I'm always open to your referrals, something like that. And then a birthday card and a Christmas card, and then rinse and repeat where every year, happy anniversary of purchase as opposed to happy, you know, thank you for your purchase or congrats on your purchase, followed by a referral, followed by birthday and holiday Mm -hmm. rinse and repeat. So those types of cadences, we're actually launching a solution right now just to do that. It's um, our first target is auto dealers, but the exact same flow is for realtors, mortgage brokers, lawyers, that type of thing as well. Um, We also, a couple clients have said, well, let's, change up the thank you note and also do make it a recommendation engine. So if you buy a high-end purse, it might say, you know, thank you so much for your purchase of this purse. And then we can dynamically insert not the name of the purse, because that would seem weird. If I said, thank you so much for your um, purchase of the um, brown leather, whatever, you know, yeah. leather purse, 86 centimeters, it would, it would be really strange. So instead you go up a level to category. Thank you so much for your purchase of the purse, you know, Mm -hmm. not without the, and then you say, you know, oh, by the way, I thought you might also like this belt or Mm -hmm. this watch or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, For another snack company, not this, the snack box I was talking about, but a different one, they were doing just that. They were saying, you know, we saw you bought the banana chips. We really thought you might like the curried peanuts or whatever. And they were right. including that as a PS in the box. So mm-hmm. um, that worked really well. We have another client, an online mattress brand, as opposed to having us write out a note. Um, we wrote a cute little, you know, thank you. But then they sent us artwork 
line artwork, uh, little doodles. So um, there were like five or six of them. One of them was somebody sleeping in a bed with a little like um, thought cloud above them of a cat or something. And then another one was a moon and stars. And our machines would literally replicate drawing on each note. Like, thank you so much for your purchase of this mattress. And then it would draw the little person uh, sleeping in bed, dreaming of cats and all that. And those notes got a lot of Instagram and, and uh, Twitter. And they're also just- And really so, th- so your clients are, um, some of the, your clients are measuring the return on their investment and handwritten yeah. um, by their Instagram feeds, what's happening, like what the viral- um, with the viral populations, what, what's happening out there virally? Yeah. Um, so what's funny is with this, with this mattress company, and I, I hesitate to break, bring it up because they, they stopped using us and what was, and now they're considering <laughs> using us again. But what's so strange is they grew a lot. They're a name that, that you would recognize. And um, they were using us for over a year. And we said, well, you know, they said they want to cancel. I said, okay, well, why do you want to cancel? And they said, well, we used your service when we were a small company and we wanted to seem personal. Now we're at a scale where we don't think that's important anymore. And I'm just like, what? that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Even but more so important now. Yeah. You need to keep that personal touch. And what's interesting is uh, in many ways, this online mattress company had a better way. They knew more about you than if you walked in the store and bought a mattress. So they could be more personal if they wanted to than the mattress store where you actually met with somebody in per- person. Also, just the time aspect. Is Jim, the mattress sales guy, going to sit down and write you a handwritten note versus a computer algorithm sends it to us, we write it, and it's, you know, it's out the door. Um, that said, we work with a very, very high-end perfume brand, really, I think more, col- well, colognes and perfumes. And I walked into a department store with my family, and I saw this perfume sitting there. And I walked up to it and I was just showing my wife. I'm like, oh, you know, we work with this brand, that type of thing. And the store rep came over, the the perfume rep came over. And I explained to her that we did these handwritten notes for the brand. And she said, well, you don't do it for us in store. We still have to write our own. All we were doing was the online. But the store reps still had to sit down and write thank you notes to all their clients. And, you know, quite frankly, how many of them get to it, you know? They want to get to it, but they're too busy trying to make the next sale or clean up their um, their merchandising or, or whatever it is that that even though they have the best intention, the compliance and follow through probably isn't there. I know for me personally, um, when I send one off notes, it takes me a lot to even just sit down to a computer, let alone pick up a pen and paper and do it. So having these processes set up automatically is often the best bet where we can integrate with your point of sale, your point of sale, or your CRM system, or your online shopping cart, or whatever that is, and make it so that you don't even have to think about it, and you're guaranteeing that that person will get a handwritten note, um, thank you, you know, with or without a gift card or whatever, a couple days later. So how big of a company is handwritten right now? Uh, We are about 20, we're six years old. We're 25, um, maybe 28 people. We, um, you know. uh, But that's not including robots. Not including the 95 robots. (laughs) We, uh, yeah, we, um, on a good month, we'll do 100, 120,000 notes. Um, We're growing and, you know, it's, yeah. Speaking of scale, how are we going to scale robots? (laughs) Just make more? (laughs) Just make more. So that's the thing. Um, the robots only write about as fast as a human. So mm-hmm. um, maybe even a little slower than a human, but they don't uh, stop for coffee breaks and chit chatting with their friends and they work 24 <laughs> hours a day and, and all that. So we are stacking these two or three, well, two? Yeah, we have, we have two racks of robots and uh, they're all racked up and you know, the average operator can operate probably 12, 13, 12 to 15 of these robots at any given time, just making sure they've got pens. Uh, so the, when they're out of ink, the, they automatically slack you. If you know Slack, it's like they'll send you an instant message saying, hey, replace my pen. They'll also slack you if you're out of paper, um, et cetera. So we have people that 
um, send orders to the robots and then also go around and just check on them and fix any paper jams and that type of stuff. But yeah, um, we do require, it's very much a factory. So we require a lot of office space. And then there's some innovations going on on the quality assurance side too, with just um, computer vision and machine learning, which I know is a big buzzword now, again, for all your geeky mm -hmm. listeners out there. But it really is, what we do is we take take a card and we stick it under a camera and it says, oh, yep, that's order at 52. And then we take an envelope and stick it under the camera and it says, yep, that's envelope 52, put them together. And there's no ink screw ups on that, you know, just to, because we're handling, you know, thousands and thousands a day, we just want to make sure that there's never an issue there. So there's a lot of technology, a lot of technology that goes into sending a hand in the mail. Yeah, my guess is that you're having to update that technology often. Yep. And uh, all that's handled internally. Mm -hmm. So the software that runs the robots, the machines themselves that are um, laser cut and 3D printed here, um, that's all done here. And then we outsource the development of the website and the iPhone app and the Android app um, and all that. But, but because that's not core, even though people inter, you know, use the website and the iPhone app and the Android app, what's really unique to us, our unique proposition is really the what happens in our office. So mm -hmm. um, that's where we spend our dollars. So yeah, my next question was going to be about the app because for me, you know, follow up is key. And um, to your point, I mean, I make a point to sit down and write a note, but um, there are many notes that I want to be writing more often. Yep. It would just be easier for me to, you know, tap, 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 and then it's done. Yep. So that's, that's what you've done. You've been able to, that, that's what we've done. Yeah. And and you can go onto our, um, onto our website and you can design a custom card. Now, if you're, if you're looking to send thousands, contact us and we'll get custom cards pre-printed, right. you know, folded, flat, embossed, whatever. Not a big deal. But if you're looking to do a couple dozen to a couple hundred a month, you would just uh, go on our website, you choose a blank card, you add your logo, it's all templated out. So you could add a logo right. to the top and an image to the back and um, footer text at the bottom. It then gets saved. And then once that customizable card is saved, it operates just like any other card in our system. So then you can open the app and select that card and write on it. You can use Zapier or salesforce.com or HubSpot mm -hmm. or Shopify or whatever to write on that handwritten note. And then um, it'll write it out and then mail it next day. As far as the apps go, they integrate with your address book on your phone. If, if you're one of those people that actually have addresses in your address book, um, so you don't have to re-enter it. If you don't enter it in your phone's address book, you can obviously enter it directly within the app. Um, just enter the address there. And then um, you can also add their birthday and stuff. We're gonna start doing reminders on birthdays so you can get those cards out. Um, when you write the, the note on your phone or wherever, um, you can insert your business card if you send us your business cards. You can add your personal signature if you work with us to get your signature made. It's a one-time fee. Um, and then again, you can add um, gift cards to major brands like Starbucks, et cetera. Amazing. It was a service designed so, for me. So I wanted to, uh, wouldn't it be cool to be able to send a gift card with an hand, actual handwritten note? So that's that's where the service came from. It's something that I wanted to use. Well, and that's a big thing because, you know, I think about that too, and I just keep a stash here, but I mean, for the most part, I mean, I was running around like, okay, I wanted to add an Amazon card or gift card, or like you said, a book. Um, I'm not a fulfillment house. <laughs> I mm -hmm. have to run around and pull it together, which at the end of the day, when you're doing a couple or, you know, under 20 a month, it's, it's feasible. It takes time, but it's feasible. Yeah. But I think to your point, just being able to tap, 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 and you guys have the fulfillment set up, they, the robots just grab it and put it in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, uh, and that'll make your, or your, your listeners, um, mm -hmm. their, their personal compliance, their, their follow-up and compliance go way up because it's just so much easier. And then well, and I want... think from a sales perspective and from an, and from a customer experience, like post post transaction, um, and you want to continue to grow that relationship, that is, that is the number one way to do it. And I mean, that's in addition in my business, it's in addition to, you know, voice to voice and, and things of that nature. But, um, you know, when you're doing 
hundreds of transactions a month. I mean, there's no way in heck your sales force is going to be on the phone talking to every single client. But I think that, you know, having these special specialty items to be able to integrate into a follow-up service like handwritten is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we get compliments all the time. You know, uh, we have pastors using us in Hawaii saying, saying their um, congregation just truly appreciates uh, the handwritten notes. We've, We've got nonprofits using it, um, and they're seeing their uh, donation rates go way up when they send a donor uh, envelope with a handwritten note. So yeah, I mean, there's so many different use cases. People ask us all the time, you know, who's your who's your ideal client? And I mean, we're going after car dealers right now or whatever, but our ideal client is anybody that wants to send a handwritten note, which is very broad. So um, so yeah, and it, it goes all the way from one individual person sending a card for three twenty five plus postage, all the way up to people sending 10,000. So, um, you know, and, and now um, for people like you, Jill, that might just send a couple dozen a month or something. We just, um, you can get discounts if you place all the orders at once. So if you were to go on our website and do a bulk upload, you get a discount for that. But now you can get a discount through subscription plan. Um, we have two or three, three different subscription plans that you can choose from um, if you're planning on that regular Mm -hmm. of notes. So there's, there's a lot of ways. I don't, again, I don't want this to sound like an advertisement. Um, I think, you know, what I really want to do is push people to send more notes, whether real or, or through a company like ours. But if you do want to go with us, there's, there's options to make it very affordable. I love that. And so, um, you know, I, I always want to ask this question, particularly um, in the kind of business that you're in at this point. I mean, I know it's technology driven, but the back end is um, human human mm-hmm. to human touch, right? And yep. um, contact and just letting people know that you're there. And um, I think it's really important. So what are the top two things you'd like to be known for or you'd like handwritten to be known for? Well, I think being a job creator in Phoenix would be a great thing, creating mm-hmm. um, high quality jobs at all levels. I mean, we have people here um, that are designing robots and uh, we have people here that are stuffing cards. Mm-hmm. And I get um, uh, boyfriends and girlfriends of card stuffers emailing me asking for jobs because they see what a great work environment is at that level and how well mm-hmm. I treat my employees. You know, it doesn't matter if you're designing your, the next robot or if you're putting a card in the envelope, there's... Right you know, it's the same respect across the board. So being a good employer is very, very important to me. And then, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think there's um, the type of on- entrepreneur that's a guy that starts an insurance company. And then the t- type of entrepreneur that's a guy that's doing something that's really not been done before. And I like, so- and they're both valuable, uh, but I like to be in that doing something that's never been done and trying to solve hard problems. And it turns out sending a lot of handwritten notes turns out to be a hard problem. So um, (laughs) who knew, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's um, solving these fun, interesting problems and now getting into machine learning and all that stuff. It's very, it's very interesting to me. And just knowing my clients love our service. um, You know, when we launched this subscriptions offering last week, we sent out an email to our base and we immediately had all these people subscribe. And that's just kind of that affirmation that people really like what you do. And Mm -hmm. it it really feels good when you get that. And then we get the same thing on, there's a rating site called G2 Crowd and just going on there and reading the reviews and seeing not only do they like the product, the the handwritten note itself, but they like working with the company and they feel, you know, we're responsive and and we provide good customer support and all that. I, I just like knowing that people love the service, so. I love that. I just want to touch back on um, all the thousands of cards that you're going to be um, writing in the next two months. <laughs> What's going to happen then? Do you, are you building more robots for the holiday season? <laughs> yeah. Holiday is always our busiest. Um, we are building more robots. It's, it's uh, right now we're building and we're retrofitting. So we are, we've been building these, we're a six-year-old company. We've been building robots for about three years now, and we're on revision five or six. So we're mm-hmm. constantly revising these robot designs. Um, so right now, 
with COVID, things did slow down a little. Um, and we used that as an opportunity to re to take the version one robots and moving up to version six, mm -hmm. uh, because that just increases dependability right. and the size of the paper feed. And all we think about here is paper feeding, believe it or not, not so much. <laughs> I mean, the writing, the writing we figured out, it's the paper feeding that who knew would be the hard thing. Um, well, because you're trying to do a nice stock, right? You're not doing some flimsy stock. So in order right. to make it impactful, it needs to, the whole package needs to be there. So I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Paper feeding is a real big deal, but yes, we build new robots and um, anybody that's in Phoenix after COVID, I do have to say, because our office is currently closed to the public. We love showing this because it's, it's interesting um, how we take pieces of plastic and laser cut them and then 3D parts and literally grow parts. I didn't know anything about 3D printing until we were doing this. And um, it's taken our cost of building a robot from $8,500 all the way down to $2,500 to build a robot. Wow. So just implementing some of these, like our first robot was, was made in metal. So, um, and the problem, I don't think I've ever shared any of this on the air before, but um, <laughs> the, the problem when you build a robot, especially when you're new to building robots, is you want to revise it. And when you're building it out of metal, um, you have to, you use CNC shops, which are, they, they cut out the metal out, you know, it's like a, at a car plant or something. And to only, to get that cost down per piece, you have to make a lot of them. So we, we had to make parts for 20 robots at a time. 10 robots at a time to get that cost down. So those were big purchases on my Amex card doing 10 robots at a time. When we started bringing that in-house, the cost per piece drastically decreased, but also the turnaround time we were able to make, you go from being this very precise, you know, let's triple check it, quadruple check it, 10 times check it, and then send it to the CNC shop to being able to, okay, let's double check it and then just print it and see if it works. And then you could you know, 3D print that piece, make sure it works, improve it. You become kind of more like a sculptor. I mean, you still have the engineering side, but there's also now the sculpting side where, okay, let's just carve a little off here, do this, make that better. And that drastically sped up um, how we could iterate on the robots. And that was with 3D printing. And then what we said is, okay, screw aluminum. Let's get rid of all the aluminum and let's 3D print everything, which wasn't the best idea. Um, for one reason, it takes a long time to 3D print a part. It has to sit there. And for people that don't know, a 3D printer is kind of like a glue gun, where it goes, mm -hmm. it takes the glue gun, and it goes up, down, left, right, and just squirts that glue, and it squirts a base layer, and then it squirts a layer on top of that, and a layer on top of that. And, and after a while, you end up with a 3D structure. That takes a long time. So we were 3D printing flat parts and it would take weeks to get one machine out. And then I said, well, you know, guys, instead of 3D printing some of this, why don't we laser cut? So that cut, uh, took the time. The cost was about the same, but the time to make a part went from two weeks for the whole platter of parts that we needed to flat 3D print to about 15 minutes. So we just like these, these curves that have nothing to do with customer experience marketing, I know, but it's fascinating for us to kind of go through this process and uh, learn how to do this because, you know, learn by doing, I guess. That's right. That's right. Well, I'd love to know, like, what kind of impact do you, um, David, want to have? Um, you know, what's the purpose, your purpose with handwritten specifically? Um, want to spread the gospel of handwritten notes because everybody is going to email and electronic. Um, so that's, that's probably the big one. And then two, being a good boss and being a good employer is, is really the second one. But um, being an innovator in the handwritten note space, an expert in handwritten notes, that's really what my company is all about and really about um, creating that connection. Because uh, you know, for this interview, I turned my phone off and my outlook off. But you know, that never happens in the real world. You're, you're in a meeting and oh, and I took my watch off, my, my, my Apple watch uh, I nice. took that off too, because that buzzes and beeps and distracts. And in today's day and age, you can't get away from the distraction. You know, I'll be no. sitting talking to you and my phone will be vibrating in my pocket or my watch will be buzzing and I'll be looking at email 
and you don't have that two seconds of focus that's so important these days. Um, we have one client, they're a cosmetic brand, and he said, you know, the closest thing to what you do is when I go into a meeting or somebody goes into a meeting, my company, that we turn our phones off and turn them over so that mm -hmm. they're not going to distract us. It's that attention. It's having the five minutes of attention that somebody thought it took you to sit down and write the handwritten note or that five minutes of meeting attention of just sitting there and Jill Hynek is, is the person I'm talking to now. I'm not concerned about my watch. I'm not concerned about my email. I mean, it just doesn't happen anymore. Um, no, so and that, it, that, is the, that is the courtesy that I appreciate so much. And we are, I mean, that's, I do the same thing. My phone is turned over. Everything is off. I mean, I just want to be focused on what you're saying. And yep. I think that that is half the battle is turning your electronics off when you're in a meeting. <laughs> yeah. So maybe if every meeting was a podcast and broadcast, so there was, some, right. uh, <laughs> you know, so there was some accountability there, but unfortunately right. it's not. And we need to return to some of that. You know, we need, right. um, it's just, you know, it's, it, everybody's becoming like a, a cat with a ball of, ball of yarn, you know, uh, or a, whatever, a laser pointer distracting them. Everyone. So <laughs> it's just, you know, you know you've, you've seen those videos of the cats chasing after all that stuff. That's where we're becoming. We can't focus. We can't get anything done. And we can't have a meaningful connection with our customer. Right. Our prospect. And that's really what this is about. Well, speaking of, um, so where can I electronically connect with you? Sure. Um, where can our listeners electronically connect with you? Um, like, for example, on Insta or where, what are your handles? Uh, so, um, Facebook is just slash handwritten, mm -hmm. um, Twitter is at handwritten and these are handwritten with a Y H A N D W R Y T T E N Y mm -hmm. because we like you. Um, ah. <laughs> and then, uh, the Instagram is I think handwritten notes because handwritten was taken, but I will confirm that right now. And then if they want to connect with me personally, just look up on LinkedIn, David Wax and or David on, on and that's W A C H S pronounced right. wax <laughs> and uh, handwritten notes on Instagram. So H A N D W R Y T T N notes on Instagram. Um, if you want to use our website, there's tons of research resources and stats on handwritten.com mm -hmm. about the effectiveness of handwritten notes and when to send a handwritten note and how to sign a handwritten note. All that stuff is on the resources tab of Handwritten. Um, and if you sign up and you want to get a few bucks free, just use the discount code podcast and you'll get a few dollars um, for signing up. And uh, reach out to me, David at Handwritten, if you have any questions. That is amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with us today. I know our listeners are like, wow, I need somebody to help me with my handwritten notes. <laughs> Great resource. Thank you so much, David. And thank you to the listeners for listening. I'm proud to share this show with you. And as you know, these stories showcase the customer experience as a legitimate business strategy, reminding us that no matter the business you are in, whether it be real estate, technology, handwriting notes, the customer experience should always be the heart of the business. 